All right, KMR, welcome back to the channel. We got some brap going on. We're going to talk about this cool FD3S RX7 based full bridge port that's going to be turbocharged. And uh, we'll do a little bit of a breakdown on specs and uh, thoughts on it. It's a cool little build, came in through the shop, uh, used block. Uh, we cleaned up the porting, uh, you know resurface some stuff lightweight rotors balancing all new bearings um, spec'd everything out to mazda speed race tolerances polished the shaft and uh generally made it so it's a little brat monster i think it's a cool build um you know for full bridgeport turbocharged motors um, obviously, you're giving up some bottom end in favor for the top end, but uh, they sound amazing and make lots of power. I always think of a full bridge port or a semi-peripheral. Anything like that is, you know, in relationship to a piston motor, a very aggressive cam. So that's why you're getting that, that brap uh, due to overlap intake and exhaust and port timing. And then uh, you're also obviously going to be using more fuel. Um, it's going to have more wasted fuel. And it's going to not idle as low, but uh, traditional Bridgeport motors like full Bridgeports were always originally designed for racing. But they've kind of transitioned into performance, drifting, drag racing, street performance, just having a good time. A lot of show cars with Bridgeports these days. So although this one's a full bridge, it is based off the newer KMR template that we do have available and it doesn't cut the water seals. So your traditional bridge port went through the water seals or went very aggressive uh, into the rotor housing and side plate, allowing for giant bridges or J bridges where they were always traditionally cutting the water seals, which created reliability issues. So one of the things as people adopted bridge ports as a more street performance or just general performance motor to increase reliability the template we now have available doesn't cut the water seals obviously it's not going to make quite as much horsepower as the massive bridge ports that gt cars imsa cars le mans cars used to run but for reliability and usability and drivability keeping all of those things in concern uh, i think the template we have available is really good and definitely creates a reliable, good sounding, fun driving bridge port. Um, you know, on the internals, obviously, new bearings polished. Um, we polished the shaft as well. With the lightweight rotors and everything the way it is, I'd say it's good to 9,500 RPM. I think a lot of people would love to hear 10,000, 10,000 plus, but I think, again, keeping the motor reliable is the customer's concern. So, Probably would set this motor up to have about a 9.5 uh, RPM redline, but it's still going to make tons of power. With the right turbo combination, right exhaust combination, this thing would clear 600 horsepower, no problem. Potentially even up into the 700, almost 800 horsepower. I usually don't see bridge ports on turbos go into the 800s. Usually that's where the semi-peripheral port territory really starts to uh, take hold, but each have their trade-offs. And uh, this particular build is a full bridge and would probably require decent sized turbo and free flowing exhaust. You don't want to have too much back pressure on a motor that has a lot of overlap. Um, we've just seen multiple combinations where too small of a turbo, which seems like a good idea to help with the bottom end, actually ends up uh, affecting the motor's ability to flow. You end up with choked up EGT. Things get too hot inside due to back pressure and the efficiency just simply goes away. So you always got to keep in mind that balance is really important. With a race motor like this, it's going to need pretty free flowing exhaust and that means your turbo can't be too small. So it is designed to make horsepower. And then with the lightened rotors, side cut rotors, balancing, Again, you know, keeping it a little bit lower on your RPM, not going too crazy, like 9,500, 9,800, again, is more for the reliability because obviously it could go to 10, but I think, you know, you miss a shift, you go slightly high, something happens, um, then you could potentially damage the motor. And so again, kind of keeping reliability for owner, operator, and engine in mind, I think is always important. So really cool build, um, you know, shout out to Mazda Tricks for all the parts, all the help. Um, you know, KMR, we did the assembly and some of the porting work, cleaning everything up. And uh, this one's going to go off to a, uh, a happy friend. 
They're going to get some wrapping out of it. If anybody's got questions about it, let us know. Um, basic oil system, uh, wet sump, FD3S pump. Um, no big modifications. We did raise up the oil pressure regulators a little bit, shimmed them, um, went after market there. Um, and otherwise, it's a pretty straightforward build. It's easy to get carried away, but I think this motor's going to have a very happy, brappy life. And I think that's a wrap. That's a brap. Thanks for watching. We've got more fun rotary content coming up. Make sure to check out the KMR store. We've got merch, we've got products, and it really helps us out if you're subscribing. We, I can't believe how much the channel's grown, so just shout out to everybody that watches the videos and watches me talk rotary. Thanks a bunch.